Lessons 3 and 4 of The Power of Concentration. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Andrea Fiore, December 31, 2007. The Power of Concentration by Theron Q. Dumont. Lesson 3. How to Gain What You Want Through Concentration The ignorant person may say, How can you get anything merely by wanting it? I say that through concentration you can get anything you want. Every desire can be gratified. But whether it is will depend upon you concentrating to have that desire fulfilled. Merely wishing for something will not bring it. Wishing you had something shows a weakness and not a belief that you will really get it. So never merely wish, as we are not living in a fairy age. You use up just as much brain force in vain imaginings as you do when you think of something worthwhile. Be careful of your desires. Make a mental picture of what you want and set your will to this until it materializes. Never allow yourself to drift without helm or rudder. Know what you want to do, and strive with all your might to do it, and you will succeed. Feel that you can accomplish anything you undertake. Many undertake to do things, but feel when they start they are going to fail, and they usually do. I will give an illustration. A man goes to a store for an article. The clerk says, I'm sorry, we do not have it. But the man that is determined to get that thing inquires if he does not know where he can get it. Again receiving an unsatisfactory answer, the determined buyer consults the manager, and finally he finds where the article can be bought. That is the whole secret of concentrating on getting what you want. And remember, your soul is a center of all power, and you can accomplish what you will to. I'll find a way or make one is the spirit that wins. I know a man that is now head of a large bank. He started there as a messenger boy. His father had a button made for him with a P on it and put it on his coat. He said, Son, that P is a reminder that some day you are to be the president of your bank. I want you to keep this thought in your mind. Every day do something that will put you nearer your goal. Each night after supper he would say, Son, what did you do today? In this way the thought was always kept in mind. He concentrated on becoming president of that bank and he did. His father told him never to tell anyone what the P stood for. A good deal of fun was made of it by his associates, and they tried to find out what it stood for, but they never did until he was made president, and then he told the secret. Don't waste your mental powers and wishes. Don't dissipate your energies by trying to satisfy every whim. Concentrate on doing something really worthwhile. The man that sticks to something is not the man that fails. Power to him who power exerts. Emerson Success today depends largely on concentrating on the interior law of force, for when you do this you awaken those thought powers or forces which when used in business ensures permanent results. Until you are able to do this, you have not reached your limit in the use of your forces. This great universe is interwoven with myriads of forces. You make your own place and whether it is important depends upon you. Through the indestructible and unconquerable law, you can in time accomplish all right things, and therefore do not be afraid to undertake whatever you really desire to accomplish and are willing to pay for in effort. Anything that is right is possible. That which is necessary will inevitably take place. If something is right, it is your duty to do it, though the whole world thinks it to be wrong. God and one are always a majority, or in plain words, that omnipotent interior law which is God, and the organism that represents you, is able to conquer the whole world if your cause is absolutely just. Don't say, I wish I was a great man. You can do anything that is proper and you want to do. Just say, you can, you will, you must. Just realize this and the rest is easy. You have the latent faculties and forces to subdue anything that tries to interfere with your plans. 
Let the troubles and responsibilities of life come thick and fast. I am ready for them. My soul is unconquerable. I represent the infinite law of force, or of all power. This God within is my all-sufficient strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. The more difficulties, the greater its triumphs through me. The harder my trials, the faster I go in the development of my inherent strength. Let all else fail me. This interior reliance is all-sufficient. The right must prevail. I demand wisdom and power to know and follow the right. My higher self is all-wise. I now draw nearer to it. Lesson 4. Concentration. The silent force that produces results in all business. I want you first to realize how powerful thought is. A thought of fear has turned a person's hair gray in a night. A prisoner condemned to die was told that if he would consent to an experiment and live through it, he would be freed. He consented. They wanted to see how much blood a person could lose and still live. They arranged that blood would apparently drop from a cut made in his leg. The cut made was very slight, from which practically no blood escaped. The room was darkened, and the prisoner thought the dropping he heard was really coming from his leg. The next morning he was dead through mental fear. The two above illustrations will give you a little idea of the power of thought. To thoroughly realize the power of thought is worth a great deal to you. Through concentrated thought power you can make yourself whatever you please. By thought you can greatly increase your efficiency and strength. You are surrounded by all kinds of thoughts, some good, others bad, and you are sure to absorb some of the latter if you do not build up a positive mental attitude. If you will study the needless moods of anxiety, worry, despondency, discouragement, and others that are the result of uncontrolled thoughts, you will realize how important the control of your thoughts are. Your thoughts make you what you are. When I walk along the street and study the different people's faces, I can tell how they spent their lives. It all shows in their faces, just like a mirror reflects their physical countenances. In looking in those faces, I cannot help thinking how most of the people you see have wasted their lives. The understanding of the power of thought will awaken possibilities within you that you never dreamed of. Never forget that your thoughts are making your environment, your friends, and as your thoughts change, these will also. Is this not a practical lesson to learn? Good thoughts are constructive. Evil thoughts are destructive. The desire to do right carries with it a great power. I want you to thoroughly realize the importance of your thoughts and how to make them valuable, to understand that your thoughts come to you over invisible wires and influence you. If your thoughts are of a high nature, you become connected with people of the same mental caliber and you are able to help yourself. If your thoughts are tricky, you will bring tricky people to deal with you who will try to cheat you. If your thoughts are right kind, you will inspire confidence in those with whom you are dealing. As you gain the goodwill of others, your confidence and strength will increase. You will soon learn the wonderful value of your thoughts and how serene you can become even when circumstances are the most trying. Such thoughts of right and good will bring you into harmony with people that amount to something in the world and that are able to give you help if you should need it, as nearly everyone does at times. You can now see why it is so important to concentrate your thoughts in the proper channels. It is very necessary that people should have confidence in you. When two people meet, they have not the time to look each other up. They accept each other according to instinct, which can usually be relied on. You meet a person and his attitude creates a suspicion in you. The chances are you cannot tell why, but something tells you, have no dealings with him, for if you do, you will be sorry. Thoughts produce actions. Therefore, be careful of your thoughts. Your life will be molded by the thoughts you have. A spiritual power is always available to your thought, and when you are worthy you can attract all the good things without a great effort on your part. The sun's rays shine down on our gardens, but we can plant trees that will interfere with the sunlight. There are invisible forces ready to help you if you do not think and act to intercept these. 
These forces work silently. You reap what you sow. You have concentrated within powers that, if developed, will bring you happiness greater than you can even imagine. Most people go rushing through life, literally driving away the very things they seek. By concentration you can revolutionize your life, accomplish infinitely more and without a great effort. Look within yourself and you will find the greatest machine ever made. How to Speak Wisely in order to speak wisely, you must secure at least a partial concentration of the faculties and forces upon the subject at hand. Speech interferes with the focusing powers of the mind, as it withdraws the attention to the external, and therefore is hardly to be compared with the deep silence of the subconscious mind, where deep thoughts and the silent forces of high potency are evolved. It is necessary to be silent before you can speak wisely. The person that is really alert and well poised and able to speak wisely under trying circumstances is the person that has practiced in the silence. Most people do not know what the silence is and think it is easy to go into the silence, but this is not so. In the real silence we become attached to that interior law and the forces become silent because they are in a state of high potency or beyond the vibratory sounds to which our external ears are attuned. He who desires to become above the ordinary should open up for himself the interior channels which lead to the absolute law of the omnipotent. You can only do this by persistently and intelligently practicing thought concentration. Hold the thought. In silence I will allow my higher self to have complete control. I will be true to my higher self. I will live true to my conception of what is right. I realize that it is to my self-interest to live up to my best. I demand wisdom so that I may act wisely for myself and others. In the next chapter I will tell you of the mysterious law which links all humanity together by the powers of cooperative thought and chooses for us companionship and friends. End of Lesson 4